Appreciate the Lord blessing us, letting us be a part of that church and those good folks. And uh, just like to invite you to come by the church. Any of you that uh, ever can come by the church, be with us for our uh, <coughs> Sunday morning worship service at 11. Of course, we meet back on Sunday evening at 6. And then on Wednesday evening, we meet at uh, 7 for a prayer meeting. So uh, we'd invite you to come. And be with us in the service, and uh, we'll just worship the Lord together in the beauty of holiness. And that's why the Lord put us here, I believe, was to worship and glorify and honor Him, purpose and beauty of man, to uh, praise and honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, keep His commandments. So we thank you for coming out today once again uh, to, uh, to the Declaration Sunday. This morning, uh, I'm going to read a little scripture. I'm, going to, I'm not going to be too long. I know we've all got things to do, but this is a very important part of the service, and believe it or not, this is, I mean, we're having church out here. How many places uh, in the world can you go out in the woods and have church? I, I love living in Western North Carolina, amen? I know some of you are from different places, but uh, I was born and raised around here, and, uh, this is just a part of life. This is just what we do, and we appreciate uh, the Lord allowing us this privilege to be out here in the beautiful creation in the, that God made and uh, uh, honor Him and glorify Him and worship Him this morning. Now listen, uh, this is a worship service this morning, so if you're saved by the grace of God, uh, feel free just to get loose and worship the Lord. Amen? You want to raise your hand and holler, Amen? Praise God. Go right ahead and do it because uh, where, the, uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. All right. Well, uh, I uh, went back and forth kindly a little bit this week with the Lord about what he'd have me to preach this morning, but I always try to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so uh, I've settled over here in uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. And we know that Hebrews chapter number 11 is the heroes of faith chapter in your Bible. Uh, if, uh, if you've not read it, I would encourage you when you get home to take your Bible. Read Hebrews chapter number 11 about faith and uh, the heroes of faith. We, we've had Bible school this week out at the church and our subject was faith. And so this week I've been thinking a lot about faith and how that we walk with the Lord. But here in Hebrews chapter number 11... Verse 8 through 16, we're going to look at the faith of uh, Father <coughs> Abraham. The Bible says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed, he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there, uh, there even one, and him as good as dead, as many as the stars of the sky for multitude and as the sand of which is by the seashore innumerable. Listen, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. And we're persuaded, he's okay, we are <laughs> persuaded of them and embrace them and confess that they are, were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they be mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. But listen, verse number 16. But now they desire a better country, that is, in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. I want to preach to us for just a little while on this thought of looking for a city. I believe that's what our loved ones that died in the faith and went on uh, with the Lord, Brother Greg, I believe that's what they were doing. They were traveling like Father Abraham was through this pilgrim land. Uh, let me say something to you. Hey, it's okay. He's okay. <laughs> let me say something to us this morning. Uh, we're pilgrims and strangers passing through this land. 
Amen. You're on your way to another country, folks. Uh, one way or another. I was thinking this week as I pondered on this service, we can walk through this graveyard. We can uh, go over to the house and walk through the graveyard over uh, Double Island, where I come from, wherever you want to go. And I want to tell you something. You're not going to find a grave down here that's 150 where a person lived to be 150. And not even 125. It's appointed unto man, the Bible says. And we'll get into that here in a minute once to die. And after this, the judgment. We're all passing through this land. Just like Father Abraham was. And I tell you, we all to be looking for a city, praise God, that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Oh, can I tell you, as we walk through this life, this world, uh, it seems like it's gone to hell in a handbasket, if I can say such a thing. Uh, but I'm going to tell us today that we better put our faith in something higher, uh, higher and higher. Uh, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and that is the God of heaven. Amen. We better put our faith in him and look to him today. Looking for a city. Hebrews chapter number 11 is the heroes, he, heroes of faith chapter. Our subject, of course, being faith. And uh, verse number 1 of this chapter tells us what faith is. Ah, you stand up there. This is my little grandson. That's okay. Here, you want a piece of chewing gum? Huh? All right. We'll take just a second. You want a piece of gum? Yeah. Well, go over and say it with your sister. <laughs> All right. Stand right there. Stand right there. Okay. Now, hush crying. We're preaching. <laughs> this is the Hebrew. He goes to faith chapter. Hebrews chapter number one. Now, verse number one tells us what faith is. Listen to this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is, folks. <clears throat> it's the substance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for today? Do you have faith in God? Can I tell you that your faith is the substance? That word substance means the foundation. The foundation of your life, the foundation of your spiritual life has to be laid by faith in the Lord Jesus. Now your faith, <clears throat> this is what it is, is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Oh, praise God. That tells us exactly what faith is. Verse 2 and 3 tells us what faith does. For by it the elders obtained a good report. You think our loved ones that died in the Lord have obtained a good report? Brother Greg, I believe they did. Hallelujah, by faith. They walked by faith through this walk of life. They, uh, they faced the challenges. That they needed to face when they was walking through life, just like we have to face today. And they obtained a good report. I believe they did that. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so things that are seen that were not made of things which do appear. Ah, oh, that tells us what faith is and what faith does. Now you say, preacher, what does faith do? Faith gives us a desire. Amen. We ought to have a desire. A desire to live for the Lord. A desire to do things. And we ought to have that desire for a better country. We should have a desire for a place called heaven. Now, the first verse I read to you said, By faith, Abraham. By faith, Father Abraham. Oh, he stepped out when God called him. He has a desire for a better country. Let me tell you what... Uh, what I see in verse number 8. Father Abraham, it says, by faith. You say, preacher, what does that mean? That means that sometime or another, Abraham exercised faith in God. That's what it, that's what it means. He was faithful. At some point, he exercised faith in God. Amen. Amen. We know that because of what the rest of the verse says. When he was called to go out into a place. Those that have faith, listen to me this morning. God speaks to them. God can call them to go out into a place. Just like Father Abraham. When he stepped out desiring, uh, looking for that city. 
so Abraham was called to go out. He had a relationship with God that the uh, unfaithful or those that don't know Jesus, that don't, they don't know about that. So it's a relationship with the Lord. So by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out, now listen to what else this verse says. After received an inheritance, obey. So Abraham has got an inheritance from the Lord. He's got an inheritance from God. And so Abraham had a desire for a better country because he left that old country. Uh, could we put that in spiritual context this morning? Let's say this morning that uh, let's talk about getting saved by the grace of God. Putting that into a spiritual context. If you step out by faith. Amen. You step out by faith. And God calls you to go out into a place. You step out on your faith and go out into this world. And uh, you leave that old country. That's what Abraham did. He left the old country where he was at. Ur, uh, the Chaldee. Go ahead and come and get him, Paul. <laughs> Take him for a little walk down yonder. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be all right. He's just a cat. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> Children, I love these young. They're, they're uh, herded from the Lord. And uh, we try to bring them up right. And sometimes they get a little unruly. <laughs> Uh, they're just young and so. Amen. That's what they are. They're just young. So Abraham, he was called to go out. He had a relationship with God. He had an inheritance from God. So Abraham had a desire for that better country because he left the old country. Now to put that into a spiritual context, when we get saved by the grace of God, we should have a desire. We should have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. We should hear him when he calls. He'll tell us to go out of the old country wherein we used to live, Brother Greg, and move into a new country. You say, what is that new country, preacher? That's the land of promise. That was the land of Canaan. And that was the place that Abraham was going out into when he was looking for this city. So Abraham had a desire for a better country. He had a determination to reach that better country. We should have a determination today, folks, to reach a better land. He sojourned uh, in a strange country. He walked by faith, and faith is what took him into that land of promise. Verse number 9 says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles of Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Abraham went out, not knowing where he was going to go. Sometimes we have to step out on faith as well. He went out not knowing where he went. In verse number 8 and in verse number 9, God led him into the land of promise. God ever done that for you in your life? You ever have to step out on faith? Not knowing where God's going to lead you? And you wind up smack dab in the middle of the land of promise. And you say, thank you, Lord. I, that's what's happening with old Abraham. He had a determination to reach that country. He's going to reach that better country by faith. In verse number 10, through, uh, for he looked for a city which had foundations and <coughs> builder and maker was God. What did Abraham's faith do? Kept him looking. He kept looking for that city God had promised him. Now, there's many promises in the Bible. We can't go into them. There's so many. But can I tell you that every promise that God's ever made, he's either kept it or he will keep it in the future. His faith kept him looking. He was looking for the city. That city had foundation. Oh, praise <coughs> God for the foundation. Whose builder and maker was God. So Abraham... He, desired, he had a desire for a better country. He had a determination for a better country. 
But then he had deliverance from the old country. Now listen to this, verse number 13. All these died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They died in the faith. They had a divine appointment. Our loved ones have had a divine appointment. You and I today have a divine appointment. According to the Bible, Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse number 27 says, and, it is, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. Oh, there's a divine appointment, folks. Let's think about that today. The verse says also that they died in the faith, not received. They did not receive the promises, not having received the promises. What were the promises that God had promised them? Number one was of the Messiah. It was of Jesus. You can go back to Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. You'll find the promise of the Redeemer where God told Eve that, uh, that, that a Redeemer was a coming, that uh, his uh, heel would bruise the head of Satan. There's a Redeemer coming. These died in faith, not having received that promise of the Messiah. They also died in faith, not having received the promise as of yet of heaven. But they were on their way. They were persuaded of the promises by God. The promises of God by faith. You can be persuaded this morning of the promises of God by faith. It also says they were persuaded of them and embraced them. They embraced the promises of God by faith. Hallelujah. And listen to what else it says. And confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on this land. They had an honest assessment. <coughs> we should have an honest assessment today of ourselves. They confessed. They were strangers and pilgrims passing through this land. The strangers, in that verse, it talks about the strangers. Second Corinthians, chapter number 6 and verse number 17, the Bible says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye a separate people, saith the Lord, touch not the unclean thing. Now listen, I'm just an old-fashioned Baptist preacher. I still believe in separation. I don't believe in camouflage Christians. Amen? He said, come out from among the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord. That's what these strangers and pilgrims were doing. Now listen, I want to put it into context for you. Abraham went down into the land of the, Can of the Canaanites. The Canaanites lived in cities. They had big cities. Abraham was looking for his city, but I read to you where that him and Isaac and Jacob dwelled in tents. The tent dwellers were sojourners. They were just passing through. Their tent stage wasn't drive down <coughs> too deep, Brother Greg. Right. Oh, they were strangers in that land. You and I today that are born again, we're strangers in this land. We're just passing through. They're strangers. We should be separate. They were separate. They were pilgrims, the Bible says. One who comes to a foreign country to live and reside there along the residence. They were pilgrims. Just passing through. And verse number 14 tells us that they were seeking a country. They that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Can I tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, you and I should be seeking a country as well. And that country is heaven. Let me read it to you in verse number 16. But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And so we see in closing the deliverance from the old country in verse number 16 into the heaven. There was a desire for a heavenly country. This morning, my desire is for that heavenly country. 
This world is not my home. I'm only passing through. The old song says, if heaven's not my home, dear Lord, what would I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Let me tell you, as the child of God, when you're <coughs> saved by the grace of God and you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit down in your heart, you have a desire for a heavenly country. You're just a pilgrim and you're just a stranger passing through this land. Nothing here. Th this world is temporal. Everything here is temporal. We'll leave it all behind one day. We'll go just as our forefathers have gone. One of these days. We have it from the old country into the heavenly, a desire for a heavenly country. He hath prepared, listen, where God is not ashamed to be called our God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Now, when I read that verse, and I'm almost done, I'm going to let you go here in a minute, maybe. I always throw that maybe in out of church. Because you know how preachers are. They say they're almost done, and then 30 minutes later, they're still preaching. I'm not going to do yours like this. Listen, he said a heavenly city. For he hath prepared for them a city. That was Hebrews 11, 16. But as I read that verse, as I was uh, thinking on this, I couldn't help but think about what Jesus said in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. <coughs> oh, that's what Jesus said. I will go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Step out on faith this morning. The faith of the promises of God. One of them is Jesus is a coming back. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, it's the ultimate truth. It's the word of God. Jesus will come back one day. He's coming back. So let not your heart be troubled this morning. Jesus will come back. Hallelujah. That's the gospel of the blessed hope. That's the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Got one more thing I want to share with you. Then I'm going to let you go. You know we can't have Decoration Sunday without reading 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Verse 13 through 18. But I want to share with you this morning why we're here. Just in my closing statement. I think it's important to know why we're here. I think it's important to know why we're having Decoration Sunday. So I'm just going to give you a little snippet of what Decoration Sunday is. Just a little history of what it means, Decoration Sunday. The tradition started in the early 1800s to honor the Christian day. The occasion with family and church and friends we decorate the grave, have a memorial service, and remember those who are buried in these, in these graveyards that influenced the life of the church and how they influenced our lives individually. That's what we're doing this morning. We're honoring the Lord, and we're honoring these folks that have passed on before some of these folks here this morning influenced your life. They influenced the church. As I walked through this graveyard, they influenced this nation, didn't they? I'm a veteran myself. I see many veterans buried down here in this graveyard. <coughs> That's a great honor. That's a great influence. Folks, we don't want to lose that. Thank God for this tradition. <coughs> <clears throat> that we still carry on on Decoration Sunday. They influenced our lives individually. They influenced the country nationally as they served our country and fought for our freedom. And so on Decoration Sunday, we express our Christian values in this form. 
That's what we're doing today. Therefore, it's symbolic of resurrection. These freshly decorated graves, all facing east to meet the Lord for that future resurrection. Hallelujah. I almost shouted when I come across this this morning as I was studying. They're facing east to meet the Lord in that future resurrection. We'll take this time of reflection and celebration to remember those who have gone on before us. Listen to this. Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 1. Therefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. That's these folks. <coughs> Let us lay aside every weight, and every, lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with, with patience the race that is set before us. They're resting in hope this morning of a glorious resurrection. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, hallelujah, shall be called up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, the Apostle Paul says, comfort one another with these words. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the blessings of life. We thank you for this time together. God, now I pray that you'll bless this congregation. Every individual that's here today, Lord, God, I'm asking you through the Holy Spirit, speak to their heart. Lord, maybe there's one here today that don't know you. Jesus is Savior. Lord, maybe they've never accepted you. God, we pray for them today, that today would be the day of salvation. that makes their peace calling and election sure. Bless each one that's here today, Lord. Give them safe travel over these roads. Bless the remainder of the day. What you do for us, Lord. God, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming out once again. And uh, just remember to put Jesus first in your life. Anybody, uh, I'll be around for a little while. Anybody wants to talk to me after the service, feel free to do that. God bless you. You're at liberty to go.